Good evening, everyone. Requesting everyone to please keep your mobile on silent or flight mode. And please avoid any kind of movement in the hall during the event. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Institute community, I, Shweta Kumar, your host for this evening, would like to extend a very warm welcome to you all at this 10th reunion of the class of 2010. This is a very momentous occasion, as I'm pleased to inform you that we recently celebrated 63 glorious years of Institute's foundation. I would now like to request Professor Kantesh Balani, Dean of Resources and Alumni, to kindly come forward and be seated on the dais. Requesting Mr. Shalane Rajput, Batch Coordinator, to kindly take his seat on the stage. I now humbly request Mr. Sai Srinivas, Batch Representative, to kindly join us on the dais. I would now like to request Professor Abhay Karandika, Director ID Kanpur, to kindly come forward and be seated on the dais. I now humbly request all aggressors present on stage to please come forward for the ceremonial lighting of the lamp, which symbolizes knowledge and wisdom. Om Shubham Karoti Kalyanam Arogyam Dhan Sampada Shatru Buddhi Vinashaya Deepa Jyotir Namostute At the commencement of any auspicious occasion, Jyoti has been observed. The lighting of lamps symbolizes abundance, prosperity, and knowledge, dispelling darkness and ignorance. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, reunion is not about counting the number of years. Rather, it's about relieving and cherishing memories and time to be, to be grateful for the beautiful journey you had as a student of ID Kanpur. Despite the few years that have passed, I'm sure nothing has changed much. We are still as young as we used to be. So why don't we begin today by relieving our old days and becoming rowdy students once again? Shall we? Let's make this 10th reunion memorable. I request everyone to clap with me thrice and shout 10 as loud as you can. Oh, come on. This bad saw, you've rat sing hitting six sixes. The energy needs to be shown. Come on, with the eyebrows tempo this time. Yeah. Better. Thank you. So let me take you on a short trip down the memory lane. 14 years ago, more than 500 young boys and 25 girls from across India decided to embark on a challenging journey away from the comforts of their home, all the way to a city called Kanpur, now named Kanpur, to be a part of this prestigious institute called IIT Kanpur. Rangde Basanti was a blockbuster, Khans were ruling the industry, Karina and Deepika were ruling all your hearts. Chai teen rupay ki thi, choti gold saade teen ki, badi gold, Panch ki. Or blender sprite ka khamba, saat so ka. Empty ki chai was always special, and two go places in the city were hukka, antarang, aromas, and rave tree. Adda point famous jagans were magu bole to studious, chapu topper, lasso bole to classic flirt. Interaction between seniors and juniors involved kolo session. Jisme hum pehle naam batate the, fir hall kramank, fir shaka, aur akhir mein hawa. Hawa bole to air, air bole to all India ranking. 
this colo session was followed by muski pocho session and finally gvm cricket match would bring cricket lovers together in the tv room sachin tendulkar batting brought cheers in the room whereas his wicket down would bring hours of mourning and drinking watching famous hollywood serials like friends big bang theory narcos were other major attractions hall 1 ki barat event was thrilling hannas barat starting uh, hannas barat starting from hall 1 was exciting guards and campus residents watching barat was mesmerizing baby resident of hall 1 getting ready in girls hostel by girls was scintillating and in this digital age pandit ji asking bride and groom to change their status from single to married was surprising and to top it all pandit ji requesting baratis to like this post and himself to be tagged was alarming 12 years of marriage let's check the happiness index through a short rapid fire round is anyone present i know hanu and baby has not come but anybody from the family <laughs> is the hanu so is the hanu status still hero number 1 or has it become kohli number 1 मैंने प्यार किया स्टिल स्टैंड फॉर्म और हैज इट चेंज टू ये मैंने क्या किया इज इट स्टिल जाने मत जाओ जाने मन मत जाओ ट्रांसफॉर्म टू जान मत खाओ ओके आई सी फाइनली तुम बिन रहा ना जाए और तुमको सहा ना जाए विच वन इज वर्किंग ओके गुड लक टू हनु एंड बेबी ladies and gentlemen this was a digital batch to see transformation in digital world as orkut the very first social networking platform was launched during this time dc++ of itk was another big add on you remember that social the, you remember the content sharing platform a story story is batch to go for industrial tour to lucknow nainital shimla raibareli I wonder you couldn't go to Goa, right? <laughs> An energetic bat to see India win its T20 World Cup title, and a vibrant bat to dance to the tunes of famous FIFA anthem by Shakira in 2010. Can anyone name that? Yes. A competitive bat to put their heart and soul to win Galaxy, not Milky Way or Samsung. I'm talking about Rajput, Smugglers, Mauryas, and Inter Hall Cultural Championship. A spiritual bat to celebrate all the festivals with great pomp and show, pomp and show, including Valmiki Jayanti Utsav at Nankari. <laughs> Last but not least, a blessed bat, as it believed in giving Vidya Dan. one of the biggest done by volunteering for for prayas a school for underprivileged students and believed in gifting smiles to many i can't personally share all your real collections of it kanpur with but we talked with few of your classmates to try to get a closer look of the batch of 2010 whose members have such nicknames i request those who are present here to kindly acknowledge by raising their hand dopa rupa <laughs> Rupa Boxer Tank Tanku Mendak Rockstar Shuna Chunna Pappu Tantric Bob daddy batinda sutta <laughs> this is all i have from the treasures of memories of class of 2010 i hope i got my facts right on this beautiful day let's all remember to laugh share fond memories and make new memories that we can talk about at our next reunion We are so pleased that we gathered here today in person something we cannot take for granted anymore
Now, without taking any more of your precious time, I would now like to invite Professor Abhay Karandika, Director, IT Kanpur, to kindly address the gathering. Uh, first of all, a very warm welcome to all of you, uh, to IIT Kanpur. Uh, we have been having a lot of reunions uh, with uh, some old alumni. Uh, we have done maybe some, uh, this year itself, we have done about 10, already 10 reunions, uh, because we could not hold those reunions uh, during the COVID times. Uh, so we had, uh, 25th reunions, 35th, 45th, 50th. This is the first time uh, that we are holding the 10th reunion. <laughs> and I'm indeed uh, delighted to be amongst all of you. Uh, very young batch. Uh, of course, I was a professor in IIT Bombay, and uh, if I was a professor in IIT Kanpur, then uh, I definitely would have taught uh, some of you. Uh, but uh, indeed, it is a great uh, delight to be with you, and I will just give you a few glimpses of uh, what the progress uh, the Institute has made in the recent years, uh, maybe after you have graduated, and uh, what is the future roadmap uh, and what are the challenges uh, that lie ahead. Uh, so first, uh, to begin with, uh, here is a completely renovated fountain in front of uh, the P.K. Kelkar Library. Uh, when I took over as a director, every alumni meeting I was going in 2018 and 19, everyone was asking what is happening to the fountain, uh, which was, uh, as you know, was a part of the old air conditioning system. And when it got changed to the new air conditioning system, the fountain had to be shut down. So we have completely renovated this. Uh, I strongly uh, encourage you to take a look, uh, particularly during the evening when it is lit. Uh, so it is called Waterfront 795. Uh, we got uh, very generous donations uh, from batch of 79 and batch of 95. So that's why it is 795. So, uh, IIT Kanpur, uh, you know, has, a, has come a long way uh, from the IBM 1620 mainframe computer that used to be in 60s, and here is a picture uh, which shows uh, nine, uh, in, of 1963 IBM 1620 mainframes being led to the computer center. Uh, to today, we have a 1.3 petaflop very state-of-the-art, high-performance computing cluster, which was installed in 2021. Uh, we have a very modern data center. Uh, if you have an opportunity to visit the computer center, uh, sort of do visit uh, the computer center. Now, uh, you know, such data centers and HPC clusters are there only in IISC Bangalore uh, and uh, IIT Bombay. So I think this is really one of the very, very state-of-the-art uh, uh, data center. Uh, we have grown significantly. Uh, we have close to 9,000 plus students. Uh, the batch size uh, now is uh, 1,300, just double of uh, what used to be uh, in your times. Uh, we have a faculty strength of 550. I will just uh, uh, show you the uh, faculty growth uh, graph. Uh, these are all academic units. Uh, I don't have to tell you uh, about economic sciences and BSB, some of you were students of that. Uh, but we have added four new departments recently. Department of Sustainable Energy Engineering uh, is one. Uh, Department of Design, uh, Department of Cognitive Sciences, and Department of Space Science and Astronomy. So these are the most recent departments. I think IIT Kanpur is the only IIT which has uh, these very unique departments, Department of Cognitive Sciences and Department of Space Science and Astronomy. There's, these departments are not there in any other IT. Uh, we converted our uh, uh, design program into a department of design. So we now have a full-fledged design department uh, uh, as well. We are currently offering uh, a master's and PhD program in these departments, but uh, 
we do intend to start undergraduate program in design like bdes bachelor of design uh, undergraduate program in energy uh, and perhaps uh, you know after some time in an undergraduate program in space science as well uh, recently we have started a completely online uh, masters degree program that is called e masters for upskilling industry professionals uh, this is a fully online program you don't have to come to uh, iit kanpur the courses are delivered online uh, and the degree that you get is e masters uh, currently these programs are in cyber security wireless communications uh, data science commodity markets uh, power sector regulations and we are going to start few new e masters program uh, as well uh, recently uh, in the ug arc uh, undergraduate reforms uh, we have done some very major changes uh, in the undergraduate programs uh, we already have the most flexible academic programs like minor double major dual degree uh, i believe all of these uh, were there in uh, your times as well uh, but we have included now uh, new degree options like honors and interdepartmental degrees so this is something very new we have also uh, have a, a got a students entrepreneurship policy approved by the senate and under the students entrepreneurship policy of course not only the students can have their startups but we have introduced the notion of innovations and entrepreneurial credit which can be actually counted towards the academic credits uh, also so this is something uh, very unique uh, that has been done we will also give credits for some courses which were done online so this is again uh, i would say uh, remarkable uh, we have now introduced the granular grading system so you had in iit kanpur only the a b c d e f which is 10 8 6 four now we have introduced 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 uh in fact uh, the uh, this was the first first time it was done was just the semester which got over in december so i think it is very very new and uh, this was a long standing demand from the students and uh, when i took over as the director of the president student jimkhana and convener student senate met me and said that there are two things one is that they want to introduce this granular grading system and they want to have a formal student entrepreneurship policy approved by the academic senate so I, we have done uh, sort of both of these and uh, obviously therefore uh, these are uh, you know uh, quite important reforms uh, we have uh, done a significant faculty growth uh, in the recent years uh, in 2018 we had only 397 faculty members maybe when you graduated we had only 350 uh, in 2010 uh but uh, uh last four years uh, we added uh, 205 new faculty members joined uh, some of course have retired so effective increase has been about 150 or 160 uh, so our current faculty strength is 552 today uh so one third of the faculty members today in the campus are the faculty members who joined during my tenure so i think uh, that is how the whole complexion of the uh, institute has changed Uh, we uh, um, uh, have a very outstanding and distinguished faculty we have padma shri awardees in fact more recently uh, professor hc verma got uh, padma shri uh, professor sudhir jain uh, <coughs> who is now currently the vice chancellor of bhu uh, uh, he also is a padma shri uh, in last year he got uh, there are infosys uh, prize award winner is a twas fellowship uh, Uh, we have a uh, foreign member of the us national academy of science uh, professor manindra agrawal uh, being a member of the us national academy of science a very prestigious honor for even us academicians and uh, being a foreign member is uh, indeed very rare uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, we have a one faculty member who is a foreign member of the us national academy of science uh, we have a goddard prize uh, winner uh, Uh, both professor manindra agrawal and professor nitin saxena who also happen to be now uh, on part of our faculty uh, you know humboldt research scopus young scientists awards and twas prize uh, we have a uh, uh, the one of the highest numbers of shanti swarup bhatnagar awardee faculty members as on roll 
uh, in the institute. The most recent have been Professor Arun Shukla and Professor Bushra Atik from BSB, uh, Professor Nitin Saxena from Computer Science, Professor Avinash Agrawal from Mechanical, Professor Anant Ramakrishna from Physics, Professor Yogesh Joshi from Chemical Engineering, Professor Sachidanand Tripathi from Civil. I'm sure all of these, uh, uh, you know, would have taught, uh, taught you as a faculty member. We have a very vibrant uh, research and innovation ecosystem. Apart from interdisciplinary programs and research centers on thematic areas, uh, we have a very strong incubator, and I will just uh, tell you uh, about the incubation. Uh, we have a, a very, uh, setting up a techno park uh, where we would ask the industry to set up their R&D labs on the campus. We are actually building a whole new building Currently, there are about nine industries who have their R&D labs uh, on the campus, uh, but we plan to expand to about 25 once the new infrastructure uh, is uh, up. And there are several uh, you know, research centers. I will talk about some of them. Uh, our incubator, uh, I would say that uh, has, gone, uh, has grown by leaps and bounds in the last uh, few years. Uh, it is currently one of the best incubator uh, in the country. We have about 100 plus startups uh, currently in a portfolio with a combined valuation of more than 3,000 crores. Uh, last year itself, we received about 50 crores uh, in seed funding. And uh, in the last two years, we would have received about 375 crores uh, in Series A fundings uh, for some of our uh, startups. Uh, in our Noida campus also, we have dedicated one building where uh, about uh, 15 startups uh, uh, can be housed there as well. These are some of the startups by our faculty and students. Uh, Endure Air is a startup which is by Professor Abhishek of uh, Aerospace Engineering Department. Uh, they had a very state-of-the-art UAV system. It was recently displayed in Def, uh, Expo, Defense Expo and Aero Show, and they have a very good traction with the our defense forces. Uh, Off-grid uh, technology is a company which was uh, uh, incubated by uh, our students uh, who graduated from uh, BSBE, uh, Biosciences and Bioengineering. They have developed a very novel uh, battery technology. Uh, Shell technology had a strategic, significant strategic investment uh, in them, and they are undergoing you know, global trials uh, of their uh, battery technology that they have developed. Uh, Fool is a very well-known company. Uh, they convert the temple flowers uh, into a biodegradable products. They have several products, but most recently uh, they have developed uh, a uh, you know bio leather, a vegan leather, uh, and uh, soon you know there will be products in the market. Recently uh, there was a, a BBC uh, film on this, uh, and uh, I would again uh, uh, you know encourage you to see you know, this documentary, not the other documentary of the BBC, uh, which is uh, you know, showing uh, some of uh, the achievements of the full technology. The re incubator has uh, received uh, you know, several awards uh, and recognitions. Uh, I don't want to get into this. Uh, uh, during the pandemic, uh, one of our incubating company, uh, Noka Robotics, uh, developed a mechanical invasive ventilator we had set up an IIT Kanpur consortium uh, with, a very, with a team of IIT Kanpur alumni, industry professionals, and experienced doctors. Uh, and uh, finally, within 90 days, uh, in March, uh, in July 2020, uh, just three months after the pandemic, uh, we had developed this invasive portable ventilator. Very, very successful products. It has been deployed in more than 3,500 hospitals across the country. And... Uh, uh, Nokark has set up a very impressive manufacturing facility in Pune. Uh, uh, and uh, we have become one of the top three ventilator manufacturing company in the country. So we are not only like uh, deploying it in the country, but uh, also exporting uh, globally. Uh, the cost of the ventilator has come down from usual imported 10, 15 lakhs to 2.5 lakhs. And that has enabled, therefore, the tier two and tier three hospitals to set up uh, critical care and ICU units. Uh, so in fact, Nokark is now developing several other medical products. Uh, this entire uh, journey was chronicled by our alumnus Shrikant Shastri and Professor Amitabha Bandopadhyay of uh, BSBE, the ventilator project. 
uh, and in fact, this book itself became one of the best sellers uh, on Amazon. So let me just tell you about a few centers uh, which uh, we are doing, uh, you know, very, very important and significant work and a lot of interactions uh, with the industry. We have a center for cybersecurity. Uh, this is India's first research lab and a test bed for critical infrastructure, which we have set up in the last two, three years. Uh, we are, uh, 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 pro, uh, you know, doing, uh, uh, providing cybersecurity to national data centers of National Highway Authority of India. Port Trust of India, National Stock Exchange, Bombay Stock Exchange, Securities and Exchange Board of India. Uh, the Cyber Security Center is working very closely with National Security Council Secretariats and Prime Minister's Office. We have a national blockchain project and under the blockchain project we have recently digitized uh, the land records of the Karnataka government and put them on the blockchain. And so that has been a very, very significant achievement. And now we are working with the uh, UP government. Uh, we are providing expertise to defense and intelligence agencies and providing tools for, for protection of all critical infrastructure uh, in the country. Uh, the mandate of C3I Hub, uh, that is a cybersecurity center, is also to incubate uh, startups in cybersecurity areas. And there are currently uh, 20 startups in the cybersecurity areas working very, very closely with C3I Center. So uh, if you have not seen this center, this is a completely new building. Uh, if you walk past uh, uh, empty section, uh, then you know you can see this uh, completely new building. So I again encourage you to have a look at it. We have a National Center for Flexible Electronics, uh, which was set up in uh, again in 2020, uh, which is conducting uh, R&D in flexible electronics. We have a very state-of-the-art machine which can print electronic circuits on flexible substrates like plastic or paper, so then it can be sort of folded. Uh, and we have developed uh, you know, several products uh, using this uh, very state-of-the-art infrastructure. We have a center for uh, nanosciences. Uh, in fact, uh, as an offshoot of the center for nanosciences, a company was incubated, eSpin Nanotech, uh, which was developing, you know, uh, a nanofiber-based uh, N95 masks. In fact, during COVID time, we had the company had set up the manufacturing plant in the campus, and uh, they were manufacturing 25,000 masks a day. So I think uh, that was uh, uh, really a big contributions uh, during COVID times. We uh, recently received a donation of 1.7 million US dollars from the Mehta Family Foundation. Uh, to set up a Mehta Family Center for Engineering in Medicine. Uh, again, a new infrastructure is coming up. Uh, the center will focus on molecular medicine, regenerative medicine, and digital medicine. We are a part of the 5G testbed, uh, pan-IIT efforts, uh, but uh, the, the major work was done at IIT Kanpur and IIT Madras in terms of developing the fully functional 5G base station. Uh, we are now commercializing this uh, technology uh, to uh, uh, to sort of having this indigenous 5G, uh, you know, in the country. You would have read many times in the newspaper statements by uh, our honorable ministers for communications uh, and also, uh, you know, uh, several other press notes that India is now in a position which can export the 5G technology. And this is what it is. Uh, so this was also acknowledged by the Prime Minister in his Man Ki Baat recently, uh, where he said that IIT Madras or IIT Kanpur ne Bharat ke swadeshi 5G testbed ko tayyar karne mein agrani bhumi ka nibhai hai. Nishit roop se ek shandar shurvaat hai aur mujhe aasha hai ki aane wale samay mein is tarah ke kai aur prayas dekhne ko milenge. So this is the one big achievement. Uh, 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 Professor Rohit Buddhiraja and his team in Electrical Engineering Department. Uh, if you are from electrical, then I encourage you to look, go to the ACES second floor and have a look at the 5G uh, test bed lab, where a fully functional 5G base station uh, we have. This is, a, this is a picture of the 5G base stations. Uh, uh, Honorable Prime Minister uh, had uh, an interactions uh, with uh, me on uh, last year uh, about uh, you know the r and d and uh, it was very gratifying to see that he later on tweeted it that proud to see that IIT Kanpur become a hub for futuristic research and innovations in blockchain technology monitoring air quality electronic fuel injections and more 
uh, and uh, uh, the support which is being given to startups ecosystem in the uh, institute uh, was also sort of appreciated. Uh, we uh, have set up a center of excellence for unmanned aerial vehicles uh, recently. In fact, we are going to start a new MTech program on unmanned aerial vehicles. Uh, we are actually, uh, uh, I would say that's uh, one of the national hub uh, for UAV. We also got uh, 15 crores from the UP government uh, as well. Uh, and uh, I would say that, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is something that uh, we can become a national resource center. We are, uh, have set up a center for developing intelligent system, which is basically AI and machine learning. And uh, we did a very big project recently for AI in uh, e-governance. Uh, in fact, uh, first uh, uh, we did this project, the Ministry of Defense had this grievance portal and they said that, you know, why don't, uh, and so far, you know, these grievances were handled manually. So they said, why don't uh, uh, you automate this and put an AI engine this? So this was first done for the Ministry of Defense portal. And then uh, the, uh, the Raksha Mantri gave a presentation to the Prime Minister. And then the Prime Minister said that this, uh, why doesn't IIT Kanpur extend uh, this to the entire PMO grievance portal? So we did this recently, uh, that the entire grievance management application of the CPGram portal, uh, those of you who work uh, in the government, uh, they will know that uh, CPGrams uh, is a public grievance portal where uh, any citizen uh, can upload uh, any grievance. Uh, lakhs of grievances uh, are uploaded uh, sort of every day. And uh, uh, now, you know, they are analyzed through an AI engine uh, developed by IIT Kanpur. We also got the national award for e-governance uh, for this. Um, with the DRDO uh, and industry, we are setting up a DRDO Industry Academia Center of Excellence, uh, particularly in nanomaterials and thin film and flexible electronics. Uh, in the DEF Expo, which was held in Ahmedabad, uh, last year we signed uh, an MOU uh, in the presence of uh, the Defense Minister. Uh, several academic and R&D infrastructures we have recently set up with a lot of support and donations. Uh, from all of you, Mehta family, I already talked. Uh, with uh, the uh, $1.9 million donation, we have set up Ranjit Singh Roji Shiksha Kendra, uh, whose objective uh, is to do the, uh, uh, you know, uh, youth empowerment in the neighboring uh, villages. And uh, the team of Professor Sandeep Sangal and Rita Singh has been closely working uh, with the uh, youth. With the Jeet Bindra, we have upgraded the unit operations lab in the chemical engineering department. So it is called uh, uh, Jeet Bindra Unit Operations Lab. Uh, with the donation from Sudhakar Keshavan, we have set up Chandrakanta Keshavan Center for Energy Policy and Climate Solutions. Uh, this is a part of Department of Sustainable Energy Engineering. Uh, and uh, we would uh, also have launched a project of making IIT Kanpur carbon neutral uh, in the next five years. So I think this is something uh, that we have been working on. Uh, with the donation from Muktesh Pant, uh, we have set up a Shivani Center for Nurture and Reintegration of Hindi and other Indian languages. Uh, so Muktesh Pant happened to be the son of the famous Hindi author Shivani. Uh, in fact, he and uh, his sister Mrinal Pandey, who happens to be a television anchor, both of them are children of uh, the Hindi author Shivani, so in her memory, uh, this center has been set up. <clears throat> there are few uh, notable scientific uh, innovations I would like to talk about. Uh, so, uh, by the way, this uh, we have recently developed touch-sensitive watch for blind and visually impaired uh, by our dean, uh, Professor Siddharth Panda, who also happens to be the current dean of student affairs. Uh, and this technology was recently licensed, and this will soon be available. Uh, in the market. Uh, there is a soil testing device uh, developed by Professor Jayan Singh of uh, Chemical Engineering Department. Uh, this has also been commercialized uh, and uh, this can actually test the quality of soil uh, in few minutes. Uh, and then there are several other uh, innovations uh, which have been licensed uh, to uh, you know, several technology companies. We have a very strong uh, uh, international partnership with several universities. Uh, so these universities which I have listed here, National Jautong University, New York University, Latrobe, we have the joint PhD degree program 
where students can spend part of the time in IIT Kanpur and part of the time in the other university and they can get degrees from both of these. So there are uh, about 50 students uh, roughly are in these uh, where uh, they can spend partly in New York, Tandon School of Engineering, New York University and IIT Kanpur and they can get degrees from both of these universities or Jiaotong University, Taiwan or La Trobe University from Australia. So these are some of these centers uh, that we have signed. We, are, uh, we have launched a significant growth uh, in the infrastructure. In, in fact, current total built-up area is 1,66,000 square meter. We are adding up 1,20,000 square meter almost. This is almost 0.8 of the existing infrastructure. So these are all some of the upcoming infrastructure. Diamond Jubilee Academic Complex, Engineering Science Building, Engineering Science Building 2, Engineering Science Building 3. These are all... Uh, uh, these are all uh, new buildings which are ready. Uh, Diamond Jubilee Academic Complex, in fact, will be the largest building in the academic area, larger than the faculty building. So this will be the one of the largest uh, building. Uh, we have a new type three apartment for housing. Uh, we have a new hall of residence 14, which is coming up, uh, which will get uh, over by this uh, May. Uh, and uh, two new halls, hall 15 and hall 16, are also under planning stage, but that will take about two years uh, for their constructions uh, to get over. Uh, you know, IIT Kanpur is over the years have built a very strong ecosystem of, uh, uh, you know, uh, biological sciences, biological innovations. Uh, we have a very strong bio incubator. Uh, there are several centers of excellence uh, which are doing work in pharmaceuticals, uh, medtech innovations, etc. So, building upon this, uh, we are now setting up. Uh, a very ambitious project of uh, Gangawal School of Medical Sciences and Technology. Uh, under this school, uh, we will set up a 500-bedded super specialty hospital and several centers of excellence in futuristic uh, R&D. Uh, so we, of course, the, in the school, we are not going to start any MBBS program. So this will not be a medical college in that sense. Uh, we are not even going to start an MD and MS program. We can have DM and MCH, but in super speciality and only focusing uh, on the research. So this is the site of this, uh, just behind hall uh, 10 or 9 near the Shivli gate. Uh, so this is a, about uh, 30 acres of uh, uh, plot, which is there where this uh, school will come up. Uh, we received uh, a substantial donation from Rakesh Gangwal, a 1975 batch alumnus uh, who happens to be the founder of Indigo Airlines uh, and uh, you know uh, he has contributed immensely. Uh, we also received uh, you know from Muktesh Pant, Dev Juneja, Heman Jalan and Anil Bansal 2.5 million dollars each uh, from them so about 10 million dollars from these four founders and uh, also Deepak Narula uh, has contributed uh, uh, about uh, 600, 600K, right? Uh, so as a part of this school, we have already launched uh, centers of excellence. One center of excellence is for cardiovascular research, uh, where uh, we have launched a very ambitious project of uh, developing artificial heart or left ventricular assist device. So currently, the cost of an LVAD or an artificial heart is about one crore. Uh, and uh, this is very critical for end stage heart failure patients. Uh, and Dr. Devi Shetty of Narayan Radhyale told me that uh, uh, 15,000 end stage heart failure patients require this transplant, but because of the cost involved, uh, uh, this surgery is unaffordable in India. Uh, and so if the cost is brought down to like 10 lakhs or lower, then we can save the lives of as many as 15,000 uh, heart failure patients uh, in the country itself, and of course, globally. Uh, so we have already initiated this. Uh, alpha, prototy alpha prototype of the LVAD uh, will be ready soon. Uh, we should be able to do the clinical animal trials, uh, you know, in a few months' time. Uh, and uh, after, you know, six or eight months, uh, you know, uh, after the animal trials, we will be ready for the human trials or the clinical trials uh, as well. In fact, we recently uh, conducted a workshop where 
टॉप कार्डियक सर्जन्स लाइक डॉक्टर देवी शेट्टी डॉक्टर नरेश त्रिहान डॉक्टर रमाकांत पांडा एंड यू नो सेवरल अदर डॉक्टर्स फ्रॉम एम्स एंड ऑल पार्टिसिपेटेड आफ्टर दैट डॉक्टर देवी शेट्टी रोट दिस ऑप एड इन टाइम्स ऑफ इंडिया यू नो टॉकिंग अबाउट आई आई टी कानपुर्स प्रोजेक्ट एंड दैट गेव अ सिग्निफिकेंट विजिबिलिटी टू द इंस्टीट्यूट सो दिस इज लाइक ए मून शॉर्ट प्रोजेक्ट faculty members from several departments like material science or mechanical engineering or electrical engineering uh, they are all involved uh, we have you know 10 very dedicated fellows uh, this was seed funded by batch of 76 and sudha murthy and also more recently you know narayan murthy agreed to give a part of his endowment uh, uh, towards uh, this project so uh, i think uh, this uh, you know in another 2 years time uh if this is successful i think we will be making a significant impact uh on the uh you know sort of the medical scene as well we are of course uh, we have got about uh, 300 crores in donations from the gangawal school as a, but we are constantly looking for help uh, for uh, more such fundings and uh, uh, all of you as well the alumni are most welcome to contribute uh, towards this activity Uh, in terms of uh, alumni engagement uh, we have professionalized uh, the alumni engagement and you can see the results of this that's how you are all here uh, we have set up a section 8 company called iit kanpur development foundation uh, which has uh, you know a independent board so these are the board members we are all our alumni uh, dr b v r mohan reddy rajiv ranjan rajiv sarup and uh, we hired kapil call as the ceo first ceo where the kapil is there uh, kapil is a very experienced uh, industry professional having worked with uh, several industries and banks like hdfc abn ambro deutsche bank etc uh, he was also the vice president of iit bombay development office uh, and that's where i knew him and uh, we persuaded him to sort of join iit kanpur and uh, you know professionalize uh, all alumni engagement and fundraising activities so we are putting in place a uh, uh, lot of platforms and softwares the results of which will soon be available uh, which can engage with the alumni uh, this has resulted in our uh, uh, you know donation graph uh, raising from about 14 or 11 crores to we touched 121 crores uh, as of now <laughs> and uh, last year 114 crore this is one of the highest uh, that we have done uh, not just in iit kanpur but also among all iits so this is uh, <coughs> really very very significant we have about uh, 300 uh, crores of uh, donations pipe in pipeline uh, and uh, i hope that in the next few years uh, we should be able to realize it these are some of the top donors in the last two years Uh, and uh, i am indeed grateful to all of them for being very very generous uh, in their contributions towards various initiatives uh, you know se setting up centers of research faculty chairs student scholarships uh, and many other uh, programs so uh, these are uh, uh, the reunions uh, that we have been having class of 86 and class of 96 which we had recently uh they have also pledged uh, 2.5 crores and 4.5 crores in terms of future road map uh, uh, i think the next two years uh, goal will be uh, to uh, complete our expansion uh, in terms of academic infrastructure uh, we are bit uh, having a serious crunch in terms of the hostel capacity so we need an additional capacity of 5000 seats uh, and i will just tell you what is the challenge in terms of bringing infrastructure uh in terms of uh, horizontal growth we may start in the future a school of entrepreneurship and a school of data sciences uh that is something on the anvil and uh, we may actually begin in, uh, activities in this directions uh some of the challenges uh, for the infrastructure has been that the ministry capital grant has been consistently going down all the infrastructures uh, that i show including any new hostel that we will build is now only built from loan uh and no grant uh so there is a loan is called higher education fund agency which is currently being administered through canara bank uh so we have taken a loan of 600 crores currently and therefore we have to pay 60 crores as a repayment uh, installment towards this so this 60 crores goes from our internal uh, 
uh, income and currently our internal income is about 110 crores so straight away 60 crores is go is gone towards loan repayment so the interest on the loan is paid by the ministry so in some sense it is an interest free loan for us to be repaid over a period of 10 years so government is not giving has stopped giving any grants for building any capital infrastructures so this is our major challenge uh, we are facing a lot of challenge in terms of hostile infrastructures and currently there is absolutely no money available the only money is that you know you can get loans from the hefa uh, which is the canara bank the revenue uh, from the ministry is only able to keep the inflation and the salary and therefore uh, as an institution and this is this is true not just for id kanpur but even for other iits uh, we have to constantly raise resources uh, from uh, you know uh, other sources uh, so i think that is uh, one of the major constraint uh, that we have so uh, we are, of course, looking for support from all well-wishers for generating resources for infrastructures, uh, for students and faculty helps and so on. Uh, we will also look for uh, your support in terms of involvement in institute activities, uh, in terms of engagement with the institute, either as visiting faculty or adjunct faculty or a professor of practice and so on. Uh, uh, institute uh, rankings uh, also need to be improved. Uh, so these ranking agencies like QS or Times Higher, they actually reach out to stakeholders and do a survey. And about 40 to 50% of that is based upon the perception like employer reputation or academic reputation. So if you are working in corporates and employ IIT Kanpur graduates, then I encourage you to participate in the employer reputation and hopefully rate uh, IIT Kanpur high. So that's how, uh, you know, uh, these uh, QS ranking agencies, you know, uh, they take into account uh, the ranking uh, of that. Uh, so that's all uh, I have uh, from my side. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I'll be happy to answer uh, any questions uh, that you may have. So if there are any questions, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, like commercial activity, like? <coughs> yeah, no, we uh, we cannot uh, sell it, but uh, we can license and earn uh, the licensing revenue. Yes, that is that is possible. We can, uh, so our e-masters program is some sense like, it, you know, it is highly priced. Uh, so it is like, uh, you know, you can earn through that as well. So we can earn through technology sale, uh, we can earn through courses and programs. Yes, I mean, those can be done. But uh, we can't become a company uh, because uh, uh, we are exempt from income tax and we don't cover uh, under any excise or something like that. So we cannot become like an industry. Uh, but we have set up some Section 8 companies, not-for-profit companies, which can get involved in revenue generations, but they are therefore not for profit company in the sense that the money earned by them cannot be distributed uh, among the shareholders. So I think, but we can, uh, we, we are allowed to uh, have startups. Uh, so we have the startups, uh, about 100 plus, where IIT Kanpur hold equity uh, in those startups uh, through our uh, incubator, Section 8 company, which is again a Section 8 company. So if this, this equity is liquidated, uh, then of course uh, we can make money. So I think that is another possibility that is there. Yeah, uh, sir, so thanks for the presentation. Uh, really impressed by all the progress that is happening. It was not really a question for you, but just a request. Uh, before this uh, session, we as a group were discussing what is it that we can do uh, for the Institute. And uh, given that, uh, all of us are pretty new in our careers and our uh, paths. We realize that it, it, as a batch, it might not be possible for us to make really large contributions at this point of time. But if the institute can come up, one person in the batch, Varun, he came up with the suggestion that if we can have an instrument which is like a systemic endowment plan, yeah. where you know every month uh, an amount we 
we decide ourselves what is it that we want to contribute to the institute every month or at a preset frequency that amount gets auto debited from our account something like that if we can set up then i'm pretty sure that a lot of us uh, will be very very happy to contribute there and over a period of time hopefully that becomes a significant corpus so that was just a suggestion yeah i think thank you i think thank you very much uh, actually and uh, uh, we will definitely work out this product and it it kanpur development uh, foundation i think uh, will work on this uh, we have already recently uh, uh, so there are two batches one is like a younger batch like you then there are very old batches uh, uh, as well uh, they had suggested and for them we have now uh, come out with a uh, gift endowment planned. planned gift endowment policy where they can uh, write in their will uh, you know some donations uh, towards uh, iit kanpur we have recently just completed with uh, the our idk foundation in the us and we are going to launch uh, uh, that soon uh, but certainly we can have a, a systematic donation plan uh, for uh, you know the younger batches yeah and we will do that yes i think thank you very much yeah Just echo what Dipanshu was saying. Uh, uh, really appreciate uh, you and the entire um, institute uh, hosting us here and making this possible. Even this is the first tenth uh, reunion, as you were suggesting. Um, well, as we were discussing within us on how we could give back to the institute, um, we were trying to understand beyond a quantum or a pot of money given. Are there specific in initiatives of the institute that we can associate with? Um, and maybe it would be helpful to uh, understand what the top needs of the institute today are, and uh, you know which ones could be potentially as a batch uh, consider partnering on. Yeah, so I think uh, as you said, uh, there are uh, two ways. One is that you can give towards resources, and if 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 anyone asks me what is the number one need for the resources, is that we would really like to improve the hostel facility. Uh, currently, I think it is very much in crunch mode. Uh, uh, there are two students uh, in a single room, which is really inadequate, uh, and uh, we have to expand the number of. So we are, we are, we are constructing some new additional blocks in the hostels. Uh, the old hostels also need some renovations. So there is, uh, I would say that uh, really the resources are needed for improving. Uh, the hostel infrastructure that is number one priority in terms of the resources uh, and whatever you can contribute small or big uh, that will sort of go a long way in improving uh, your hostels or your friends hostels and so on or you know uh, in terms of getting engaged with the institute uh, in other ways uh, we have a very very strong uh, incubator uh, and uh, uh, I would uh, really strongly encourage you to get engaged with incubators in many ways, either as mentors to startups or investing in the startups or working with the incubator for helping them for, we receive uh, like several proposals for incubation. So we need a group of people to evaluate uh, those proposals, uh, participate in those meetings and so on. So you can, uh, so we have a strong network of such people who are helping, uh, but you know, more the better. I think that is one way. Second way is that uh, uh, you know you can. We have uh, introduced the notion of a professor of practice. Uh, so now we have a visiting professor of practice also, and it is not just visiting professor, but we also have a visiting associate professor of practice. Now, what does it mean? It is uh, you don't need to have a PhD or a, a master's degree. Uh, if you have a sufficient years of experience, for example, in your case, about 10 or 12 years of a corporate R&D experience, having an online knowledge, uh, then maybe a visiting associate professor of, professor of practice could be something you can come and get engaged, uh, you know, in your areas of specializations uh, and benefit the students. So that is also we have recently, very recently, these positions we have approved from the board, and there is a possibility. And finally, of course, we need the help of alumni in improving the perception about the institute, which has gone down uh, significantly, and improving the rankings. And I told you that there are various ways in which you know uh, you can contribute uh, towards that. So I think these are some of the ways uh, in which you know the alumni can help, uh, just uh, other than you know just the funding. And yeah. <coughs> Thank you.
Sir, uh, firstly, great presentation. Secondly, uh, from some of the institutes that we attended after IIT K, what we saw in terms of, I attended a very relatively young institute called ISB. It's been around for like 15, 16 years, and it still competes with the IIMs in terms of rankings, research, prestige, as well as contribution of alumni to its uh, to its betterment. Now, the for one of the uh, first few best practices having a batch wise uh, mailing list. Uh, had some communication channels like and I like right now we have our ITK email IDs, but we, it's not like we can send a mail uh, to the entire batch and all the batches, uh, all the batchmates are mapped onto it. We are functioning with some WhatsApp groups and all. Uh, it would be really great uh, if the ITK alumni ecosystem could be activated via some communication channels, which is a very basic requirement for sending out any communication, whether you want uh, improvement in rankings, whether you want to. Uh, seeking experts as professors, whether whether you are seeking investment in whatsoever way, any plans on implementing the same? Do you think that makes sense? Yeah, yeah. no, no. I think this is a very important aspect, and uh, we are working uh, towards that. That is the reason I said that uh, we have set up this uh, IIT Kanpur Development Foundation, which is like a professional arm, uh, where you know we have hired uh, Kapil as the CEO. Kapil is the CEO of that. And uh, we are building, uh, you know, some. Um, so first of all, you know, for example, in IIT Kanpur, we did not have a very complete and up-to-date database of the alumni uh, itself. Uh, that was one problem. Another problem was even uh, getting communications with the donors. So for example, the progress of the projects for which they have donated, what is happening. All these periodic and regular communications were also missing. So we are developing a platform uh, for this. I think uh, Kantesh will talk about that and also Kapil can mention. Uh, we uh, uh, are, for example, uh, getting uh, platforms on Salesforce and C basically CRM uh, you know, platforms. And that will enable the communications uh, with the alumni and also amongst alumni more professional and better. So I think uh, we have started work in this. Maybe it will take about six to eight months of time. Uh, to sort of fully functional uh, and uh, where you know we can see the uh, benefits of that but i think there is very very important aspect and it is very much needed this was what, what was missing uh, in the earlier uh, uh, you know our dean of uh, resources and alumni office and that needed to be professionally strengthened any other things Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, but I think, uh, uh, so let me tell you that uh, this, in order to do this, we need the support and uh, cooperation from all, uh, like which includes all stakeholders, faculty, students, staff, uh, alumni, all have to come together uh, to make this a success. And uh, uh, one unique uh, aspect of uh, this is there that, uh, Alumni have been engaged with the institute uh, in a way which has uh, never happened before. And I will just give you a few data points. Uh, the one data point is that the IIT Kanpur board, the board of governors, comprises of all IIT Kanpur alumni. Absolutely, everyone. So, the, uh, which includes, of course, me as well. Uh, the board uh, has one um, uh, one additional secretary from the ministry uh, who is an IS officer. And uh, usually it is possible that that IS officer will not be, of course, uh, cannot be IIT Kanpur uh, al alumnus. But it so happens that this time the additional secretary Rakesh Ranjan also happens to be 1987 batch IIT Kanpur <laughs> uh, alumnus. Uh, so the board is completely uh, you know 
IIT Kanpur alumni board. I mean, this has uh, sort of uh, never happened uh, in the institute. So uh, what I want to emphasize is that since they are all IIT Kanpur alumni, uh, and one um, important aspect of uh, the IIT Kanpur faculty, student, and alumni is that, that they have a very strong emotional attachment and bond uh, with the institute. And uh, when they get involved uh, with the institute in any ways, whether you know as a mentor to startups or as a board member or as a student or as a faculty, uh, obviously their commitment is uh, very very high, and uh, this has been reflected, I think, uh, in whatever uh, we have done. So I think uh, that is uh, uh, indeed you know uh, very commendable. Uh, and I, I mean I can tell you that. Uh, uh, IIT Kanpurites are more attached to the institute than other institutes. I mean, I have I have taught in IIT Bombay for 25 years, uh, so uh, so I know that uh, uh, this bond is uh, much much stronger, and uh, uh, we just want to capitalize uh, on that bond. So what is really needed is to exploit uh, that emotional uh, attachment and bond, and all I have done. Uh, is to enable that. The rest, of course, has been the contribution from all of you, including faculty and students. So, yes, yeah. Yeah, I think this is a very good, this, this does affect us. Uh, first of all, it affects directly in funding. Uh, in fact, uh, those who got Institute of Alumni, they're getting 1,000 crore in five years, so 200 crore every year. Additional money that they are getting, which is IIT Bombay, IIT Delhi, IIT Madras, ISC. And it affects, definitely, as I told you, that a funding position is very, very tight. And so it affects uh, in terms of hard cash, definitely. Uh, secondly, it affects in terms of reputation and status. So this has been a very sore point, and I think the reason was that in 2017-18, uh, just before I took over, there was a lot of negativity uh, about IIT Kanpur. You know, when I took over as the director, it was very, very turbulent times. If you look at, I mean, I can show you the newspapers, both local and national, you know, only carrying negative news about IIT Kanpur, and that hit the institute very badly. But I think in five years, uh, we have turned around now. You can only see the uh, positive uh, uh, news. It has been now even, as I told you, it has been even appreciated by even the highest, uh, like that is the prime minister. Uh, so we are making renewed efforts uh, in that direction. Uh, we recently engaged with McKenzie. Uh, in fact, uh, McKenzie's managing partner, Rajat, uh, happens to be a uh, good friend and also an IIT Kanpur alumnus. He put together a, a team of uh, McKenzie, uh, some peop uh, pe people in, which also included uh, some young IIT Kanpur alumni also. They were, they worked with our, our IIT Kanpur team uh, in the last six months or so and we have sort of produced a very good vision and strategy document and the roadmap with the help of McKenzie that we have submitted to the ministry. And uh, we are sort of making uh, renewed efforts and we need the help of uh, influential uh, sort of alumni and opinion makers, those who are working in the government uh, and also in the political system uh, to impress uh, upon the government to see. And I'm trying uh, my best. We have a large number of IIT Kanpur alumni who are uh, in uh, uh, very important positions. There are large number of alumni who are working as secretaries to the government. Uh, including, you know, sec like re current re uh, revenue secretary, uh, for example, uh, uh, is an IIT Kanpur uh, alum, 1990 batch. Most recently, you know, ex-defense secretary was IIT Kanpur alums and so on. Uh, we have a uh, 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 minister for communications, electronics, information technology, minister of railways, Ashwini Vashnav, our alums. Uh, in fact, we overlapped, uh, both of us, uh, during my days here in IIT Kanpur. So we are trying all efforts. Uh, it is uh, a difficult uh, proposition right now because there is no such scheme exist, uh, but I think it is very much needed.
uh, and uh, uh, you know is required i would say the tenure of a director is uh, five year and uh, my five years will get over in this april <laughs> That again, I do not know, but uh, but yes, I mean it is, uh, yeah. Uh, put ourselves on the list of uh, institutes of eminence. Uh, do we need an IT cell also? Uh, kind no. of Twitter trends and all those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. So actually, uh, we are building that. Actually, what we did is that you know we engaged uh, with a. PR agency at Factors, uh, which is a Mumbai-based PR agency. They are currently our uh, media consultant for last one year. And uh, with the help of them, uh, we are sort of trying to set up a media cell, uh, which will work on both uh, dig digital media and social media, as well as uh, you know on print uh, and uh, electronic media. Uh, but currently, I think uh, uh, we had to take this help in fact, taking this PR agency at Factors on board has helped remove some of the negativity because uh, these PR agencies have contacts with uh, editors and reporters of all news channels, uh, both print and electronics, and they know like sort of how to uh, work around, uh, you know, even if uh, there is some negative uh, image coming out, uh, negative news coming out. So I think that was very much needed. So I think we yes, we will we will have to set up. But as a part of the IOE, I think it is uh, more a perception at the government level. Uh, and uh, it was really unfortunate uh, that we lost out uh, in 2017, uh, 18 frame. But uh, uh, if today an IOE proposal is called or a meeting is held, we will be, I can tell you that we will be, would have been at the top. But unfortunately, that uh, meeting took place in 2017. Right now, our stocks, uh, in both in the uh, government and ministry circles are very high. So if today any meeting is called, we will not miss. But unfortunately, uh, uh, that's not there. So we are making those renewed efforts. And it was, as I've said, that we hired, I mean, uh, thanks to Rajat, uh, he offered all his help. Mackenzie actually uh, worked with us uh, in writing that report uh, recently pro bono. Uh, in fact, uh, thanks to Rajat, they did not charge any money. Otherwise, you know, uh, such efforts, they put actually four full-time people uh, working for six months almost. Uh, that would have costed uh, more than a crore uh, to Mackenzie. But uh, I think Rajat helped, uh, uh, you know, got that thing pro bono done from Mackenzie. So these are the kind of helps, you know, which alumni can offer it, which uh, necessarily doesn't mean that you have to donate, but uh, it's like an indirect uh, uh, way of helping the institute. We could easily save one to two crores, which I'm sure Mackenzie would have... Uh, uh, charged if we had approached, uh, you know, uh, as, a, as a professional agency. So, yeah. So, I think we have submitted the reports, but let's see. <coughs> so, any... Uh, think, yeah, so I think thank you very much. You do enjoy and... Uh, I encourage you to take a walk uh, in the campus and uh, look at uh, you know the beautiful campus uh, that has grown uh, both in terms of concrete and green. Uh, so uh, I, I, I just want to tell you that uh, contrary to popular perception uh, that so much concrete has come up, uh, what has happened to the green cover, the green cover has only increased. We have in the last five years, we have planted 2,000 trees. So. <laughs> Uh, and uh, 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 we are actually creating another garden with the Miyawaki concepts of the Japan. So that is also another uh, thing. Uh, and, and I think we are put in place a mechanism to sustain. The, it is easy to plant a tree, but it is more difficult to sustain uh, you know, it blossoming into a tree. I mean, plantation can be done, but you know, it needs a mechanism to see that it becomes eventually a big tree. So I think uh, uh, our Dean of Infrastructure has put up a, a special effort and I will strongly encourage you to see some of those green patches, uh, you know. Thank you, I think. <coughs> Thank you.
thank you sir for giving such an insightful view insightful overview of the institute i would now request professor kantesh palani dean of resources and alumni to address the gathering a very good evening and a very warm welcome back to your own home iit kanpur and this is the first time I, we are actually we have called this cla class of 2010 for the 10th year i mean this is the first time we have we have taken this initiative of uh calling this 10th year reunion so i'll be happy i think if it continues uh, and also you keep coming more frequently to the campus and again homecoming is a time to actually revisit the place i am happy to learn that some of you have already gone to your halls and starting this nostalgic connect again with the iit kanpur but also this is an opportunity to start something new and help for the growth of the institute which is helpful both to you as well as to the institute and much more personally meaningful and to also leave some legacy uh, behind uh, again to just to give you a record of uh, things happening or eventful things happening at iit kanpur so we started in april uh, this year last year and it started with a mou signing with uh, gangwal ji and in july we again had a foundation stone laying ceremony for the gangwal school of medical science and technology following that we also had jeet bindra ji visiting and inaugurating this units operation unit operations and innovation lab and it was very nicely uh, received by the chemical engineering department and then again uh, we have incepted this shivani center for nurture and reintegration of hindi and other indian, indian languages this is to provide a soft landing to students coming from non english speaking background so that way also it helps and uh, it is it has a multifold uh, i think uh, prongs of also providing some technological solutions which i think we which are not there currently but to promote that provide some content in hindi especially for the courses to serve as an ice breaker and also to maybe help in say language grammar correction and also some technological technological solutions to hindi related uh, aspects also alumni sponsored uh, academic r&d infrastructures include this mehta family center for engineering and medicine and uh, which is actually very helping very much psb department and also chandrakanta keshavan uh, center for energy policy and climate solutions it also will help to make uh, institute carbon neutral so this is also very good initiative which is uh, which has gone forward also to remain connected a delegation from iit kanpur visited uh, usa and visited new york washington chicago san francisco where we could connect to more than 600 plus alumni so this also shows our commitment that we would like to enhance this alumni engagement as much as we can also we recently celebrated our 63rd foundation day on november 2nd and there we could also recognize multiple uh, alumni so like through distinguished alumnus award uh, we could recognize to, uh, 11 of them distinguished service awards to two young alumnus award to young emerging alumni and also satyendra ke dubey memorial award for their extraordinary services also we recognize two institute fellows professor verma and professor shrivastava on that day uh, on the eve of that we also had a cultural program antarang uh, which uh, highlighted glimpses from tagore hindustani vocal recital as well as carnatic sorry a vocal recital and then actually that also uh, one highlight was that uh, bog chairman uh, dr k radhakrishnan himself actually performed uh, on that so that was very nice to uh, see that and also it was very well received by the community Uh, again coming back to reunion it is a tradition of giving back so don't i mean it's fine that because uh, some classes have pledged some amount but as it was raised that it is better that we would like to give from class of 2010 a sustainable amount on a week on a monthly basis i think that is more than welcome but just to highlight that other classes have come forward like 795 waterfront and also there are some academic initiatives to create some chair positions or some uh, help to students in some in some sense so this was to leave a lasting legacy but nonetheless each and every rupee what you donate actually matters a lot and also goes a long way so i think more than amount it is the sustained i think interaction engagement with the institute that will i think is well respected and we will appreciate that so this is class of 1979 95 and you could see this waterfront 795 so once you get a chance please do visit it looks very good i think with lights and fountains on especially in the evenings and class of 1970s coming forward to help with gym expansion plan and they have uh, pledged 2.5 crores and which is actually in pipeline and they'll be here sometime in february so they will take it uh, they will continue this 
And recently, we also had class of 1986, 1996 coming forward and pledging some amount. But again, I'll highlight there have been multiple such initiatives, uh, starting from PBC CEC 1965 batch fund, Khadim Divan building, BSB building, outreach, Park 67, fac faculty lounge, squash courts, Raji Motwani building, Yoga Aerob Aerobics Hall, 1972, Ashiana Opportunity School, then very recently, waterfront and gymnasium up uh, upgradation and ex expansion by class of 1970. But yes, I think this is in pipeline because from this year, we are engaging the current batch to come up with uh, sustained giving. So on a monthly basis, they'll be pledging or giving some amount from this salary. And that can be, I think, any amount. It is not a matter of how much or how big. Every amount, I think, is valuable to us. But it should be on a sustained basis. And to class of 2010, also, I'll urge uh, it can be any amount, but it should be on a monthly basis. But 600 plus, all those who are actually in this batch should start to give. So as a whole, it will become very, very impactful. And it is, I think, up to you. How, how would you like to contribute? How would you, would you like to support it for making IT Kanpur a better place to live in and also provide a better experience? So there have been some reunions. So first reunion this year was for class of uh, 2020. And it was a COVID batch. So they had a theme of convocation. So when they came, actually, we really you know, had the stalls and all. So they really enjoyed. And it was, I think, more than 450 uh, or so, I think, came together and attended the reunion. So it was very, very, I think, energetic and uh, very nice to see uh, them seeing them coming back to campus. Then later, we had class of 1972 uh, in November. Uh, following that, I think we had, OK, this is again 50th union for class of 1972. And then following that, we had class of uh, Okay, 1986, 23rd December, 22, 23, 23rd December. Then we had uh, 1996, which came after that. And 1997 batch also came just immediately after that. And this was the longest because it ran over a year, 2022 to January 1st, 2023. And again, we had a class of 1987, uh, 2023 in January 6 to 8. And another one, 1982, again, 40th reunion. And then one more, uh, class of 1971. Again, it was a Golden Jubilee re reunion for them from 23rd to 25th Jan January. So we, I think, had a flurry of reunions. So currently, we have finished eight. This is the ninth one. And six more are in pipeline. This, this were held on campus. So we are really thankful for, I think, coming and again connecting back with your alma mater. So we really appreciate that. And we are very grateful. And also, we had, I think, chats uh, in the corridor and just uh, meeting some people out here. Uh, that you would really would like to continue by giving a sustained amount. So we really are thankful and grateful for that. There are multiple uh, avenues available. So these are for initiative, initi initiatives for faculty. So you can help in launching some chair positions. And there are two which were recently launched by RN Biswas uh, chair and also TR Vishwanathan faculty chair. And also these are also young faculty fellowships. And these are all were contributed by former students. And there are multiple initiatives for students. It can be for endowed scholarship, financial aid. So we are also starting Sahyog financial aid program for those students who need immediate help when they actually come to campus. Uh, there can be multiple merit awards, travel grants, also student development programs in terms of communication, placements, or anything else. So we really urge you to please help us. It can also be your engagement, maybe your uh, maybe thoughts on how did you circumvent those obstacles when you were here as a student. So even some talks with students will also help. So we really urge and request if you can give your time and also mentor some if uh, possible at your end. And again, this was also highlighted earlier that we could grow in terms of donations received. And this year, we have already crossed 120 crores. And 70 plus crores have come from alumni. So really, again, we extend a very sincere thanks to them. Uh, just to enhance the transparency and also to provide a platform to the donor in terms of what is available. So we, uh, we are starting a project management system, in which case it will be a single repository, a single uh, stop to provide uh, annual reports, show fund utilization, show work progress. And if there can be any notes, personalized notes by the, depart by the recipient or the department or students, that all will be facilitated at a single portal. So that is the one part I think we were mentioning earlier that to enhance the transparency as well as trust of the donor on the institute and to showcase what uh, institute has been doing with that fund that is that was donated by the donor. 
We also uh, do not shy away from extending our gratitude. So we, last year we had uh, published this Kritagya magazine. And this year we're again coming up with a newer version of it, Kritagya 2022. And this will be launched sometime in February uh, this month. So this is again in pipeline and this is uh, will be launched sometime soon, very soon. Also, you might be at a vantage point uh, in terms of uh, showing influence or having influence in the industry where you are serving or any other firm you are there for any CSR partnership. So it is also very helpful that if you can come forward, engage with some research or providing some support for uh, to the institute through CSR. And again, these are all tax exempt once you are donating it to uh, campus. One more thing I'll highlight. So as Professor Karandekar already mentioned about plant giving program, that is, I think, for people who are almost on the verge of retirement. So that aspect also has been initiated. And with the current batch, we are again planning this uh, sustained giving program. So we, again, I think, will be very happy if it also gets started, uh, started with class of 2010. So this is a team member which actually has helped. So I was uh, hearing that I think many of you, I think, came on the last minute because I think just because of seeing others, so it shows that how much well you're connected and how much uh, of, I think, thought you have for the campus to come and also share your you know, memory when you go back. So this is a team which actually helped uh, from uh, ITK Development Foundation. Uh, so these are the people who actually work behind the scenes to help you come, uh, arrange your accommodation, maybe uh, organizing some events, and also uh, arranging the entire thing, the pickup, drop off, and everything else. And also this is a team from DORA, Dean of Process and Alumni. They're around 20 people or so, 15, 20 people from the DORA office. So again, uh, with this, I thank you and welcome home. I hope you are having a good time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I would now request by batch coordinator, Mr. Shalane Rajput to kindly come and say a few words. Good to see all of you. I mean, a lot of efforts we tried in 2020, then 21, then 22. Finally, in 23, we are here. Out of 550 ways, we managed to get some 70 people here. But it's good, I mean. We will start, so we will start like uh, contributing something, and then it will like grow up in coming years. It will also promote other batches to like contribute for the development of the institute. And enjoy your day, and we have a good dinner after that. Baki aap log enjoy karo kuch aur help chahiye ho to message bhi. IIT ka tempo. Hi. Thank you, sir. I would now request Mr. Sai Srinivas to kindly address now. Whatever Shailendra just said, whatever he just said, plus one. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else. But thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much for doing the 10th one for the first time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as we have come to an end of the ceremony, I request Mr. Kapil Kaul, CEO ITK Development Foundation, to kindly come and deliver a word of thanks. Uh, thank you, Shweta. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm really honored to propose the vote of thanks for this event. But before I start that, I, I really want to thank you for coming forward and proposing that you, uh, as a batch, will start the concept of uh, what I call what sustained giving or systematic or uh, small giving plan. We've, we've already planned that with the graduating batch in 2023 and uh, have uh, got the whole platform ready for that and it's it's very easy it's just at a click it's nothing complicated uh, and uh, it it really makes a lot of sense that younger batches are coming forth and thinking in that direction so so it's it's very encouraging for us that uh, number one uh, as the, the, you're the first batch with, that is coming back for its decennial reunion which is the 10th year reunion and you're also starting a program which has never been done in the past in the Institute. So uh, a big round of applause for all of you. So uh, 
To begin with, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Karandikar, uh, our director, for being here and uh, sharing a very insightful presentation with all of you on the progress that the Institute has made. Uh, I would also like to thank Professor Ganesh, our deputy director, for all his support. He's not present here in person, but uh, uh, for most of our decisions, administrative support and other things, he's, he's always there and uh, a huge enabler for us in hosting these reunions. Uh, my, uh, my heartfelt gratitude towards your batch coordinators, uh, Sai and uh, uh, Shailendra for getting all of you together, uh, for, the, for, for getting so many of you turning up last minute. It is so encouraging uh, to see that uh, I kept checking with my team that how many of them are coming. So, so the number only kept growing. So, which is which is which says tells a great story of the bond that all of you have. Uh, I'd uh, also like to thank uh, Professor Balani, uh, Dean of Resources and Alumni, for his presentation and support towards this reunion, uh, and a special thanks for uh, the the staff at uh, DORA and the whole team at IITKDF who've made this reunion and all other reunions possible. So they've work tirelessly to ensure that you are hosted well on campus, you have a great stay, you, you go see the things that are happening on campus and, and also have a lot of fun with each other. And so, and finally, a big thank you to all of you taking time out to come back on campus with your own and also to your families for accompanying you or in some cases letting you go and for a weekend and allowing you to be here. Uh, that's a big thing. So thank you very much and uh, enjoy the campus. Take care. Good luck. Thank you.